Hello, everyone. Love and blessings. Welcome to another episode of Dragonfly Heart Medicine Radio. I'm Kristen, and I am really excited for my guest today because we just talked just a little bit before we um, got on to record, and she is going to be talking about some things that I am interested in. So I'm looking forward to learn from her and her wisdom that she is here to share with us. So go ahead and let her introduce herself. And then tell us why she decided to be on the podcast today, and we'll dive in from there. Uh, my name is Saris, Saris Villanueva. I live in also Los Angeles, California, uh, known as Tavaland Nation. I am a co creatrix of my budding seedling business called Estuary Moments, mm-hmm. which is a, a uh, intuitive and spirit development business geared towards helping people find their vocation, working through crossroads, and as well as owning their power and their own sense of leadership through embracing the crossroads. So that's really the start, but it's which, and at the moment, I'm doing divination readings at the moment related to it. So that's about me and practically. But in my personal and life, like I'm into Aikido right now for the past several years. I have been into like pleasure activism for myself, which is my own womb healing journey for myself. And other fun things besides those two things are I like to go to art art shows, art gatherings, which is Still, I want to, but now it's virtual instead of in person. You know, mm-hmm. uh, eating and then cooking food, reading, as well as just loving on my fur babies, which is my dog and cat. <laughs> That's the fur babies. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, some of the things that you just said really resonated with me. I mean, the fur babies and the food, right? I love cooking and love learning more recipes and that's always really exciting. But um, how you talked about how, what you, some of the things that you help assist people with like owning their power and embracing their crossroads. And I really like that you said embracing because a lot of times I feel like, like resistance comes up when we go through challenges and crossroads. So I love that you're assisting in that embracing process and also Um, you've mentioned pleasure activism. So are there any of these topics that you can speak a little bit more about? Uh, Pleasure activism was, if it it really started with just lowering on my body first, Mm -hmm. it really got initiated four years ago, few initiations or moments that were initiations. Like four years ago, just when I started Aikido, I got robbed in my car. (laughs) Oh, wow. From my phone and punched in the face in my phone. Like when on my way, what during it Koreatown at the time and, and I wasn't the process of, you know, finding help was just as dramatic as getting punched in the face you know, filing a police report and going through it it is just as traumatic as being punched in the face. But at the end of that, I did have supportive friends that helped me get through that and a supportive workplace where I can get have a week off or two weeks off without without worrying about like it'll be a penalty (laughs) in recovering from both the emotional experience and all that that led to a situation where I did have my first, th- uh, my own therapist. I did have therapy before in college, mm-hmm. but not uh, consistently, but I have my first therapist. And at the time she was specialized in, in, uh, in a nervous system regulation thing, a modality called MDMR, which is a specific type of modality as well as regular therapy to help the using rapid eye movement, but instead of being lasered, it's just through light electric, like 
like signals to see where where is it distressing when we ever have inquiries about really to help me with the incident but mm -hmm. also with other things that also are coming up for about a year on top of regular therapy and then life got ready I wasn't able to continue it but it was covered by the victim the victim's bureau which helped me cover it and accepted my police report and covered that therapy at the time so mm -hmm. from there that that really initiated that part of realizing how important river system regulation is at that moment and being held in that space. And then another moment is when I had to, you know, you know, have an operation to remove a fibroid that's growing in my womb. <laughs> wow. You know, which I had good medical care to do it, which I wish everyone had. You know, you know, but that, but I also know how what it's like when it when you have good medical care to go through it, as well as seeing as I'm learning how do I prevent a fibroid when even my doctors who wanted to be all natural couldn't do it with natural method, and then that led to a journey of more deeper regulation in that area. And so through that journey, I learned the importance of regulation, not just only when relaxing, but honoring what your stress is at the moment mm -hmm. and embracing that moment, moment as well and honoring your responses, even whether it's from your own or from your ancestors or what, that's when mm -hmm. I learned that wisdom. So that seems dark, but but it's learning that that helped me get pleasure deeper as well as experiences of what it's like when you're witnessed and held and taken care of has got me to pleasure capacity to do pleasure activism now. Yeah. Because I have experiences of that. Right. And it does seem like so many of us who are called to be healers or light workers or whatever you want to call it we go through quite a journey of self-discovery and we have things that are actually <clears throat> like not pleasant at all come up, but it sounds like as unpleasant as some of those experiences were for you, you were still able to learn a lot and now you can hold space for people who are going through similar things. Um, and you mentioned EDMR, like the rapid eye movement. Um, what other tools and techniques did you use when you were going through the process of regulating your nervous system? Uh, besides like a uh, great talk therapy, which helped, I did learn eventually encountered a uh, work of Lumos Transforms. I eventually learned that. And it's local in Los Angeles and what I learned from, they call it the resilience toolkit. It was just using different ways of equal, like internal observing and external observing to do it. And there's nervous system practices. The more important is the framework of understanding how to take out your internal landscape so that you have the capacity to understand the external landscape from honoring where you are at, not just only when you're relaxed. We want to get you there, but if you're in a situation where the external and internal or, or what it is, you don't want to pretend it's not a <laughs> sort of situation, mm. which doesn't serve <clears throat> you in forcing yourself to relax when right. the internal and external are not being witnessed. <laughs> you know, that's the more important framework because the tools are really just basically nervous system tools that takes about two to five minutes at a time, but it's but it helps like help you present to where you are. Uh, like we did a lot of orienting, for example, like it's basic like tools, but it's quoted it and gentle that gets you there. You know, and it's also, for example, as well as some tremor practice, which is usually happens when you intentionally activate or slow down enough so that you could be ready for it. And it's once again, basic, to the root, but settling practices that get you there kind of thing with 
the clear intention of like, I will honor where I am at and where the external environment is at. So that, and what I need to build. So that's usually the framework and that helped me shift how I do the system regulation. Yeah, those because are some I, really important things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's important to ultimately want to relax, but you need to give yourself an environment to do it or recognize if it, if it is okay to do it first before you force yourself to do it. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, we don't really get anywhere by forcing ourselves to do things or by resisting what is, right? So I love how you talk yeah. about just honoring where you're at no matter what it looks like and doing your best to get to a point where you can relax or to an environment which is peaceful or whatever you need. But sometimes, you know, we're, we're in, we're experiencing a lot of stress and a lot of trauma and we don't want to feel those feelings and we don't want to be in those places. Um, yeah. I love how you just talk about honoring where we're at. I feel like that's super important. Yeah. I think is that help. Okay. Just observe it and learning those two. That was, like three years ago, and now it's more consistent because they have group programs for people who want to keep practicing, not just be enrolled as like students of just practicing. Because there's like the group, there's one for wanting to facilitate. Okay. And then those who want to just practice it on your own time. And then there's like a group you want to keep practicing. There's a group programs for those who already went through like the, learning the skill on doing it for yourself. And now you want to do it in a group together. And mm -hmm. I can tell you that through that is realizing like just be present to where it, like that's important. And, and doing it in a group while still being proud makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. You know, not that you have to do it through their own little um, practice group, but having someone who just help, not even as an accountability buddy even, but just like help you know, because nervous systems do like to talk to each other. That, so like if you can, so part of that learning, learning that you don't heal alone, mm -hmm. but you healed empowered with other empowered people around makes a difference. That's which a really, beautiful, mm, really beautiful way to look at things, you know, um, to, cause I know sometimes if I'm feeling stressed out, but then I enter a room or I'm around a group of people who are a lot calmer, it kind of like starts to rub off on me. And then I start to feel safer in that environment when the people around me are calm, or even sometimes just being around people, I know it helps me feel safe and held and loved and supported. And so I like how you talk about the, you know, doing these things on your own first, but then also looking at doing them with a group. And is this technique that you learned something that you would like to like share and teach with others eventually? Or uh, I would eventually that? when I have be, be a trained facilitator okay. it, because it's not learning the techniques themselves is the holding space capacity mm -hmm. to, nervous system level. This is, I mean, this is one where, or having a certification is worth it. Like, and because it's one thing if you teach it with one of a group of friends. <laughs> right. But if you're doing it as among other teachers, other peers who are professionals or even group to group, when you're intentionally do it as a healing or what's that or one on one client, but if you're doing it. Oh no, you froze. Hello? Maybe she'll come back in just a second. I don't know. Is there a message in the chat? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good now. You froze for a second and then, but you're back. We're good. I can hear okay. You. So it's one thing to teach it with just like one-on-one -on -one client or your friends. But if you're talking about like a doing a group, like a group therapy, if you are Osprey or doing like a group program where this is a part of it or among like teacher training where you want this having this 
that we're going to be in a trade facility for this type of framework and sequence makes a difference. Which mm -hmm. is why I need for this uh, as a good be coach is uh, it's not just about honoring the surfing. For me, it's honoring like the mastery of mm -hmm. holding the facilitation process for yeah. a nervous system modality like that. Where you know, like I can teach it one on one or with friends, but if I'm teaching like let's say a group coaching program, that's mm -hmm. not that uh, that's better if I actually got used to facilitate it collectively a few times. I love that you are consider taking that into consideration because I don't feel like a lot of people are. And there is a difference in learning how to teach a modality and also and the learning how to hold space and to have a container where people feel safe and being trauma informed and all of those things so that you can hold a true space for people to feel really safe and have really big transformations and deep healing. So I love that you spoke to that because I don't feel like everybody's aware that there's a difference between just teaching people how to do something and really truly holding a true container and facilitating something. Yeah, this is can tie into the more I notice that my nervous system I can honor where I'm at, when I'm relaxed, then I intuition can channel speak to me mm. because I'm not, I can own my subjectivity, but I'm not clouded by different voices. Mm. You know, we, because the capacity of the nervous system helps you stay with your intuition, you know, which is very important when you are gonna be willing to hear like your, 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 your spirit, your voice, your own voice and the wisdom that you have inside of you and sensing wisdom of others. It doesn't get talked enough that how much nervous system needs to be a big ally in expanding your capacity to deeply listen and receive these things. Because if you can't hold space for yourself at the level or allow yourself to be held at a nervous system level, you're, you will have a hard time following your intuition. Yeah, there's been several times where I am trying to make a decision about something, but I'm way too stressed out at the moment. And later that day, or maybe a few days later, when I'm calmer, I can see the situation from a completely different perspective. And then I notice like it's really easy to make a decision. But when I'm in that like really strong, like fight or flight thing, it's like, yeah, I don't think straight. And I may only be thinking about the negative things or only the positive things or feel overwhelmed by the amount of decisions that are available. And yeah, it is definitely really hard to trust my intuition when I'm in those spaces, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's once again, I love how you're talking about, you know, making sure that you as the facilitator are able to go into those places and hold space so that you can be listening to your intuition and channeling information as you're teaching too. Teaching, you know, and it's a journey ever since working with, in this case, healing the womb, but also practicing these basic levels of called the resilience toolkit, nervous system regulation modality, which is a series of tools. It's not, it, it's not like one, just mm -hmm. to clarify. And learning to deepen that, I expanded my capacity for space I learned to, you know, sense when my shadows are coming up, when the light and my shadows are coming up, not right away often, I'm human, but, <laughs> but I can, you know, be able to snap, snap back and say, okay, I, I don't have to make a decision right away because I just need to witness what's showing up for now. Like I, I can trust that I am gonna do that. Like have more embodied self-trust mm. and a lot more nervous to be smart on when it comes to looking for, let's say a teacher I wanna learn or client I wanna draw it or, or looking for when I'm looking for something or when I am be 
a drawing in spaces or let's say nervous system street smart, which is something you can't implant someone in the head, <laughs> no matter how much you want us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, then could you speak a little bit more about um, like womb healing? Because I feel like a lot of women that I know at least have a lot of unhealed and unresolved things in that area. And it's manifesting as like, you know, skipping men menstruation or having extremely like heavy flows and things like that. And I've heard from some people that when you start to focus on like who healing the womb and the divine feminine, sometimes those things that are happening physically start to shift and change mm -hmm. a little bit. Did you notice that at all? Or can you speak? I to did know I did notice it when I started doing my first womb healing womb healing. It started with healing my erotic energy first, which mm. re through meditation and breath work first with another teacher who is a friend of mine and which which also part of learning that is learning how to sense your your womb, your yoni, your your reproductive system, and then learning to heart and how to breathe in to make sure that your pelvic bowl is not so tight. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, because when you're breathing and you're breathing from the back you realize you're armored up energetically mm -hmm. because because it shows back the back and here and and your pelvic bowls when you breathe it's like you can't expand so I learned to de-armor that and then and then I actually work with who does jade eight practice and and other and other like tantric things related which is a lot of it it's not just jake it's also learning like give yourself time to intentionally practice honoring my sensations of everywhere not just with mm -hmm. having a breast massage which i love that now but you mm -hmm. know i notice that that my cramps before the erotic work work, which is 2020 and 21, and then in 21, throughout basically two years, um, I would have cramps would be kind of, it's not horrible, but it's like annoying enough that I would make Facebook posts about cramps. Can you not be on vacation? Can you not mm -hmm. vacation this month? Can you be not be here? Yeah. <laughs> I would do that, do that. It doesn't debilitate. It's not really, but it's like oh, it's annoyed mm -hmm. enough that I would make present Facebook enough post. where you notice it. Yeah, yeah, make Facebook post like at, mm -hmm. as a joke because it's like, can you not visit? <laughs> but now because of that, I you know it's not so. Go having the menstrual period time isn't so miserable. <laughs> okay See, even if it did cramps it's like I know what to do now is to slow down mm. even if I end up having it I end up not pushing it before but most of the time it's become rarer and rarer that the cramping and the pain mm -hmm. you know is so okay. it's not intense mm -hmm. you know but it's it just like some time right of you doing this no. work to notice a difference or did it happen like right away? With the breath work and the JD practice and then and sent, uh, learning how to honor the sensations and the senses, which as well as a lot of like self-pleasuring practice really does just be transparent. It ends up, it ends up like not, the cramps are not, as, no longer be as painful that mm -hmm. I dread them. Like I don't dread the menstruation much. Yeah, that's huge. Cause I know for so many women, we dread it. We don't enjoy it. We are not looking forward to it. And it is painful and can be really long lasting. 
that is not dreadful anymore because it's like, oh my god, I, this is what it's like to not have to be in so much like it, um, tolerate pain, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, feeling like it's there's always stressing out. Mm -hmm. you, know. you know what I mean like it's like you realize like you get the dull ache and you realize oh, it's normal but then when it's taken away like oh my goodness I don't it's not oh my goodness this 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 is what it's like without this chronic this this chronic thing this ongoing like dull ache every mm -hmm. month that happens mm -hmm. yeah and I think your story can be inspiring to other women to start exploring these things and not being ashamed of our sexuality, but being empowered by our sexuality. Yeah, so that really hit home. I'm like, wow, this is this is a big deal, and I'm just I'm grateful that I mean, I mean, this is what shown to me, and it was like it was more like after having surgery to fibroid mm -hmm. and one other things after that is like it's either okay how can I like prevent these things from not for growing you know any form of it somehow it led me to okay it shifts me to you know even if it did happen again how can I approach it differently mm. not be tied to controlling and preventing it from happening but how can I enjoy the womb because because as soon as I keep regulating my nervous system and empowering my womb space and honoring that part of me and learning to shift, not about per, like controlling how I can stop it, but mm -hmm. rather be like, okay, how can I on, how can I love her, love them and her, but love that part of me instead mm -hmm. to know that, gee, I got, I got this. <laughs> That's now right. the more important. I got, I got her, and I, and, and we will work this out, you know. So it's no longer in fear, which mm -hmm. made a huge shift because for a lot of time, I still want to prevent it from happening again. Right, but just being open to the experiences and doing our best to let go of expectations and being. It sounds like you're really, really grateful for a lot of the tools that you've had over the past few years and um, are healing in some pretty really deep ways, you know, with um, several things, not just the womb, but it affects everything. Mm -hmm. So I think like the what best one is that because of the womb, my creativity and my intuition just got shot. That is a big one. <laughs> Besides, like being relatively close to pain free menstrual periods, <laughs> the intuition shot up. Yeah, yeah, because our sacral chakra is all about creativity and sexuality, and they go hand in hand. And, you know, if we're not allowing ourselves, if we're not feeling free and comfortable in our bodies, it definitely hinders our creativity and listening to our intuition. Mm. You know, like, and now I can tell you that because of that, uh, besides like the intuition ways, like, like being able to just hear all parts of my body, you know, without questioning myself. Yeah. Being able to um, present to energies around me in a way where I am not constantly overwhelmed all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, or I be, or how can sensitivity be a strength in a way where it's about holding capacity for that sensitivity? Mm -hmm. Not either shut yourself off or or get easily crushed by it. I think it's incredible. Like it, as well as seeing like. You know, you know, various like spirits and all that, and just being present in a different way is just like it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. Which really 
led to the birth of what I'm doing now, <laughs> actually. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for for being here and sharing your story. Is there anything else you want to talk about or discuss or share? Uh, I think I'm feeling close to completion because this is like when more sharing about how when your vessel heals and uh, there's its inherent wisdom, Mm -hmm. every part of it can work, can work as a team including your mind can all be your best friend. Mm. Right, nothing, yeah, nothing it remains the enemy. Everything remains as something that's working for you. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then your intuition becomes, you can hear your intuition from there. Like, it's really that, it's one of those days I'll say it's, it's you, there is a ease to this, and I would and then you were like, why did I learn this sooner? Kind of stuff, <laughs> including myself. And part of it is that it's one of those days where I don't want to say whether you're ready or not. And I don't want to make that description, but it's more like it's there's ease to this process, but it's not sim- but it's not, it's there's a simplicity to it, but it's not easy mm-hmm. because there's a lot of things you got excited about yourself before you even are ready for for any medicine you take yeah and that's my final one is that don't feel like horrible that that you didn't know what you know now but Mm -hmm. honored that you know you gotta be ready whenever you're ready and that's what my final thing is on nervous system so if, if you're all worried like that you're not at this capacity you are then it's not forever right it's just not forever thank you again for being on the podcast for sharing your story and your wisdom it was beautiful and I'm glad that you were on this other side of things where you can really just start to notice differences in in your life and how you know it wasn't easy, but it was simple. But it's pretty much just choosing you, choosing yourself and choosing your healing above all else. Mm-hmm. Okay. And thank you to anybody who is watching or listening. I will put her information in the description in case you wish to contact her or know more about what she provides. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>